So to begin with on our warm color, cool color weaving project, I'm going to take my large sheet of watercolor paper. I want to match up the corners, place it on a flat surface, and I want to put a crease in the middle because we're going to end up cutting down that line in a little bit. And we want to do our warm colors on one side, our cool colors on the other side. And we're going to do a blend on this. So you can kind of start with a large brush and lots of liquid watercolors in here and just kind of smoosh it around a little bit. Rinse off your brush, switch to another warm color and you can just sort of mix it and blend it in. I rinse my brush in between, pick up a little bit more yellow because when I mix my yellow and my red I'm going to get, that's right, an orange color in here. I want to be careful of my line and I'm not worried that I dripped a little bit of yellow on the other side because I can fix that in just a minute. So at some point in time, you want to make sure you follow that line. Kind of like that. Fill it in. And you can see when I leave the colors wet, I paint wet right next to wet, it makes some really fun and interesting patterns. You can also rinse your brush, wipe it on the edge of your cup, and you can kind of tap, tap, tap some water, just plain water on it, and it will make little water spots on there as well. And I want to do the other side cool colors. I got a little bit of yellow on there, so first color I'm going to splatter on here is a little bit of blue. And it's okay if it accidentally gets on the other side a little bit. I'm not going to panic and worry about that because when we weave it together, you're going to see both colors anyway. So I did my blue, and then I want to do a little bit of green. So I can pick up some of my green. Same thing, just kind of blop, blop, blop. And you'll notice this is all in real time. I haven't sped anything up so that you can see what it really looks like. I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple, my final spots. And again, you can see where that fold kind of stops my paint from spilling over because my paper is going to want to bow and bend a little bit as I get it really wet. Kind of dab, dab, get all those spaces filled in. Rinse out my brush, wipe it on the edge if I want to. I could do that little splatter splatter with her plain clean water. I want to keep it just to this side though. I don't want it to try and mix with the other side. So now that you have a painting, you want to carefully pick this up. There is a lot of extra here. So I'm going to get some paper towel to blot that before so I, if I blot. I'm just going to go straight down. I'm going to let the paper towel absorb that watercolor extra that's on there. I'm not pushing very hard. I'm just pushing really gentle so that it will touch and make contact with there. And then it's also a technique you can use if you want to blot just a little bit on the other side. Again, you don't want to do this a lot and end up with browns or all over purple, something like that. You want to just keep it very simple. And a few blots here and a few blots. Do it on the other side, even though it's been sitting for a while, and you'll see if I have crinkly paper, it makes a fun crinkly pattern on there. I like that. And again, this is also a good time to pick up a little bit more of that water if that was something you were interested in, and just kind of tap it on your knuckle to do little sprinkles on your paper and it will have little dots they almost look like little stars or constellations so now you're going to take this and put it on the drying rack i'm going to demo this using some liquid neon colors uh, so you will have that choice in class as well so now what i want to do is i've cut my strips down to one inch strips i want to decorate each of these with something a little different on them um, you can pick any simple symbols that you might like different shapes um, or things that are important to you and you'll want to repeat them in a pattern. It can either be the same thing all the way across or maybe you change it for a few. You can do an A, B, A, B pattern, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, A, B, 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 A, A, B, 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 and then A, A, and these are really nice on their own, but we also want to go back and add in some extra color. So we're going to be using our oil pastels on top of these. You want to take your time, try and stay inside the lines as much as possible. The other item that you might want to use um, would be colored pencils. Then for, this part. for the insides, we want to use colored pencils to color inside our lines. You're going to push firmly, but not too hard, and it'll give us a nice texture on our paper. You can see that 
part showing through from the background. And I'm going to use cool colors on top of my warm colors for this particular one. And you'll want to follow a color pattern just like you followed a shape pattern as you work your way across. You might even use that one color to fill in all the shapes before you switch back over to your other color. And you're going to do this on all of your strips and you can change your patterns and your shapes as you change to different strips if you would like to. You don't have to keep the same pattern for every single one. Next thing you want to do is line up your ruler with the long edge of your paper and you're going to draw a line across there and then you're going to do the same thing this direction but you're going to start at that line that you drew and come all the way down. You want to make sure that they're parallel to each other so I line up this side with the marker and then this side I draw all the way across. Next thing we want to do is we want to cut along those lines that you drew being careful to stop up here at this last one okay. This last piece, it's a little shorter, so I'm just going to go ahead and snip it off all the way. Now you want to take your strips and you want to start weaving. So you're going to go under, over, under, over, and you can pick these up and pop them up to move them out of the way so that it shows up. We're going for that checkerboard pattern, right? Every other one. And you want to make sure this gets pushed up all the way to the top. Your cuts should be all the way to the top so that it should line up nicely with that one. Now when you come down to this next line, this one's on top, so this time I'm going to start under and then go the other direction. You guys can say it with me. So over and then under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And then I'm going to use my fingernails to push it up to tap. Now, they are a little longer because remember we cut that one strip off. That's perfectly okay. We're going to keep repeating this all the way over, under, over, under, down. So over started, then under, which means now I have to go over again. So over, under, say it with me, over this one, under here, over this one, under, over this one, under, over. Push it up to the top. So they should line up with each other while you do this. Now, you'll notice as you get closer to the bottom, they like to try and slip out this side over here. So you wanna keep making sure you're pushing it up against the top as you're pulling it across your paper, just like this, right? And then for this one, we're getting really close to the end now going to be a little trickier to get it to stay in there as you work your way across. We did it. So we want to, whoops, see how easily that tried to slip right out of there. So before any of this moves too much, what we want to do is tack down the ends with a little bit of glue. So when I glue down the ends, I do a nice little dot of glue. Oh, I'm going to make sure all my glue is down at the bottom. There we go. And then I push down. You'll probably have to push down a couple times because this is watercolor paper, so it doesn't absorb it quite as readily as regular paper does. I glued the other side already, so I'm gonna push, push down. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna do the same to the ones on the back that are kind of pulling up a little bit. We wanna make sure that they stay and that they don't fall out before we work on the next part. A little bit more here, up here. here. I don't want it squishing out all over. If it does, I'm just going to wipe it off with my fingers. And again, push down, make sure they're sticking. Because I have some extra strips and I can fit one more over here. But in order to do that, I have to make those snips, right? Back up towards those lines that I already cut. I didn't want to start with it because then there's nothing to hold my paper in place while I'm weaving all the other ones. But now that I'm finished, I can go back and cut just to where that line is there. And I can weave one more in this side. It is tricky though because it's really short over here. 
but it will make our artwork look very nice and neat and much more complete than if we had just left this blank on this side, right? So same thing, I'm gonna tuck it all the way up and then I have to glue down those edges. So I'm gonna flip it over. And now you can glue down your edges all the way around. So you can start looking for the ones that go on the side, side to side as well. By the time you're done, you will have glued down quite a few squares with glue. A little bit of rectangle on this side. Now when I drew these designs, I went this direction on my paper. So for the cool colored areas now, I'm going to do it the short direction. 